I'm Marissa Sherrick here at CES 2018 with Plugheads Live, part of the Tech Podcast Group. I'm here at Showstoppers, and Nigel is the CTO of RealMax Chian. What can you tell us about what RealMax is? So RealMax is a, a company building technology today mostly for education. Uh, but one of the things that we've done this last year, I think, has got uh, a lot of excitement for all aspects of the consumer uh, sort of technology market, and that's these. So we call these the RealMax Qian, and they're augmented reality glasses. Uh, now, there's other people at CES showing AR glasses, but we think these ones are kind of special, so I'm very proud to be here with them. Oh, that's wonderful. So what makes these special? Well, I'm going to go for four things. So the first is uh, that they're mobile. So unlike some glasses, uh, these don't need to be plugged into a PC. Uh, these are, have got an Android CPU, and you can go anywhere with them. Um, the second thing is the size of the digital picture. So they measure that in what's called field of view. Um, if you take something like the HoloLens from Microsoft, that's just under 40 degrees. These are over 100 degrees. So it's kind of like going from a small screen TV to an IMAX movie theater. It's a really big picture. Um, kind of third great thing about these is that they have what's called sixed off tracking, which means when you're seeing digital content, um, it stays anchored in the real world and I can kind of walk around it. I'm seeing the real world, but I'm also seeing the digital stuff uh, kind of as if it's planted to the floor. And then the fourth thing is, you know, we are a Chinese company. Uh, we are interested in the consumer market. And so we're helping to sell these at a consumer price point. Don't know what that is exactly, but I'm certainly hoping it will be less than, let's say, an iPhone X. So you're saying that you're still in the prototyping phase. What, are, what is your schedule right now for the headset? Um, yes, yeah, so, uh, so we've just finished these prototypes uh, probably about a month ago. Um, we're going to start releasing these to developers who build content in Q2 of this year, of 2018. And then we hope to start selling to consumers in Q3 of 2018. Well, that's really quick. And your consumer, you said, is focused on education. How is that going to play in with augmented reality? Well, I think education is only one market for AR, but I think it's a really exciting market and it's one which our team is just kind of passionate about. So uh, we actually had a business for a long time providing things like industrial robots to colleges. Often these colleges are like community colleges, vocational schools, and it's sometimes difficult for them to afford a big robotics lab. So uh, an inspiration for these glasses was creating virtual robots that students could study, they could study how to program them and manipulate them, but you could have like the robot sitting literally on a desk. Um, and it's, it's digital. So, so that's one example of an educational application using AR. I think there'll be lots of others, things like telepresence, where you can start doing social media and see your friends as an avatar. Uh, but maybe those will come a little bit later. So with these are still in the new phase, and you said you're going to start passing them out uh, to people to find new ideas of what to do with them. Sure. That's right, and I hope that um, uh, when we do, people will start building great experiences on AR. I know that uh, when I show these to people who are like in the banking industry, they'll say, wow, I've got, you know, at my workstation, I have monitors all around me. With these, the monitors could be kind of floating around me. And, and I wouldn't need so much electronics uh, to sort of carry around. Uh, when I show them to doctors, they, they sort of have the idea of using it to train student doctors who could see a patient and could learn how to kind of diagnose different things or, or learn certain procedures in AR before they practice them on real people like us. So, so it seems to me almost everybody uh, has an idea that could be made possible with augmented reality. And, and I think the challenge is for companies like us to build uh, great glasses at a good price so that people can start innovating and start being creative. Well, it is it's great to be creative. What companies right now are you working with to start putting these into the educational use? 
Uh, well, we're based in Shanghai, so um, they're probably not companies that, that, that your viewers will be familiar with. Uh, one example of a company, though, is ICVE, who are one of China's biggest publishing companies. Uh, they publish curriculum for schools, so they make textbooks. And their idea is that instead of just getting like a textbook on how to program an Arduino, uh, you would also get this AR class that would be online, um, and you'd be able to see different types of um, Arduino uh, components uh, in AR, and you'd be able to study how to kind of mount them on a circuit board, uh, uh, how, how, to, how to interface with the different sort of features of the chip, um, before you tried doing it with the real, the real thing. And that way you kind of you learn before you, uh, before you actually have to uh, sort of get too, too physical with the components. These are all great applications, and you said that, when do you think these will start being produced for the mass? I, I, I mean, I think we will uh, start to ship late summer, um, and I hope that uh, we get a lot of interest this year. Uh, maybe it will take longer, maybe it will take a year, I think, for AR to really get uh, a lot of momentum. If you look at what happened with VR, you know, here at CES, three years ago, VR was just starting, um, and now you can kind of walk into the average market and find people selling plastic VR headsets. So it, it, it took two or three years for it to kind of reach that kind of mass market place. Um, I don't think you're going to see technology like this being sold in quite the same way as VR is being sold. But, but I, I guess that in the next two or three years, it will become quite big. Well, it's great that you have such a concept of like the, what the future holds and such an honest down-to-earth reality of what the market has for you. Yeah, yeah well I'm, I'm, I'm pretty optimistic but I'm also realistic so um, I, uh, I've been in the business for a long time and I know that uh, it, it won't happen overnight but I do think that this is a really exciting technology and I actually really believe that this product is, is pretty unique so I'm optimistic for 2018. Well I'm optimistic too and I do love this product. Thank you so much. Thank you. For continuing CES 2018 coverage, go to plughitslive.com slash CES.